What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about fighter pay, not for people like myself or the lower UFC stars, but we're gonna be focusing in on the big people. The people like Conor McGregor, John Jones, Ronda Rousey. I'm gonna do this episode in one take because I'm away from home and don't have the ability to edit tonight, so it's just gonna be a one and done thing. Why is this important to know? Number one, as a fan, of fight sports, it's nice to know how much the fighters are getting paid. It seems like that's something in the boxing world which everybody is very interested to know. But when we go to the UFC, they don't have the disclosed payouts where they go pay-per-view points, how much they're getting for the win bonus, other undisclosed pays. And the reason that we are able to access this now is there's a lawsuit happening and they had to reveal some documents. I like to talk about this stuff on the channel because I know many of you are very interested in being MMA fighters. And I saw something the other day with Sean Strickland, very interesting, when a UFC champion says, I don't recommend being a fighter. And I wouldn't go as far to say that because I'm a fighter and I love it. But I do want to point out a couple of the negative sides as we're going through and talking about these big numbers which the fighters are earning. First reason Sean Strickland said don't be a uh, MMA fighter, he just went, in general, you're not going to make a lot of money. These guys are making a lot of money, but you're probably not going to make a lot of money unless you get to the very, very top. But that shouldn't matter if you love what you do. Myself being a kickboxer, I don't get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars every time I fight, but I love what I do, so I go, oh, you know what, it's kind of worth it. So let's jump in here to some of the numbers that have been revealed through this court document. And we're going to start and focus, obviously, on the biggest star, which is Conor McGregor. Some of the biggest numbers we've seen. So it goes through per fight which is interesting because it gives us sort of a, a track of, okay, when he was at this point in his career, he was getting this much and see how it builds. It also sometimes says how much revenue, pay-per-view, was generated through the fight. So you can see the discrepancy between boxing and, which is 50%, by the way, that's something that was established years ago with the Ali Act. 50% of the pay-per-view has to go to the fighters. They also go through some numbers here, so let's just dive right into it. Starting off, when Conor McGregor fought Chad Mendez, he received $3.2 million approximately for the fight. When he fought Jose Aldo, $4.4-ish million. Aldo received around $2.3 million for that fight. Those are good numbers. Those are solid numbers. But in a moment here, we're going to see something that's interesting. When he fought Conor, uh, Nate Diaz, when Conor McGregor fought Nate Diaz for the first time, he received 5.5 million. Diaz received 2.8. Big numbers, but the pay-per-view event generated 61 million, which goes to show you why the boxing stars are getting so much more. I, I like seeing these numbers. Like I said, as, as a fighter, as a fan, it's just interesting. Uh, the biggest number that I could find here was when Eddie Alvarez faced Conor McGregor. McGregor got 6.8 million for that. That's a lot of darn money. This is interesting stuff because years ago I heard people talking about how much GSP was getting. This was, you know, you didn't have access to this type of information. And people were saying, oh, he's getting like 500,000 or a million. And somebody that I knew who was behind the scenes in the fight world was saying, no, no, he's getting more like five. So we do hear occasionally the fighter is getting a lower pay. Why do they do this? Why would UFC want you to think that they're getting less money? because they face a lot of criticism from people underpaying their fighters. I can tell you why that is. If you're curious, you can stick around. Simply because if you have fighter A and they're a fairly big star, and let's say they're getting 100 grand a fight, and then fighter B comes along, they're not a star, and they're going, oh, I want 100 grand per fight. They're going, no, no. Fighter A is getting this much, you're down here. So then they can all of a sudden say, no, you're worth more like 30 or 40. But even though Fighter A might be getting 500 grand, after all is said and done, they want those initial numbers which you hear to be lower so the other fighters recognize that as, oh, okay, I'm not worth as much as that, I'll take a lower amount. 
Let's look at some of the numbers which Ronda Rousey did because she was a big star back in the day. Obviously the biggest female star that uh, we've ever seen in the UFC. Starting off, let's see when she fought Liz Carmouche. She got just a little over 500 grand. Misha Tate, 1.8. When she fought Holly Holm, she got 4.5 million. And Amanda Nunez was more like five. So, like I said, these are good numbers, but you have to recognize this is very few people who are getting that much. Adesanya might be getting that much. Now somebody like mm, Alexander, oh, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. You guys know who I mean. The uh, UFC featherweight champ, Volk, Volkanovski. You have these few stars who are getting that much, but we have to recognize that it's few and far between. If you can become a star like that, that's great. You're getting the pay-per-view points. Obviously, you're getting a bunch of money from endorsements and sponsorships. Remember, though, that these numbers, when you hear somebody, oh, they got $4 million, they might be giving away 10% to managers. They might be giving 10% to their trainers. They might have other things like taxes and such. So it's not going to be as big as that at the end of the day, but still good money but not when you compare it to boxing. Anyway, this was interesting stuff for me. Just, I'm out of, you know, I'm not back in Victoria right now. I wanted to make an episode for you guys. Don't want to forget about you. And I was reading about this and went, yeah, let's, let's chat about this. Because now you know when you see your favorite fighter, if they're one of those big superstars, they might be getting somewhere between two, three, four, five, maybe even a little more for these big fights. Sounds pretty good to me. It's nice to know that your favorite fighters are getting paid a decent amount of money because these guys put their heart and soul into the fight world. It's hard on the body. I'm right now just sporting a whole bunch of injuries. One on my elbow, which is just killing me right now. I can hardly get my, my shirt on. So when you go through that type of pain, it is nice occasionally to have some financial rewards. And if you're in the UFC and you can become a star, that's great. If you're willing to just go into the fight world and not worry about how much you make, that's probably the smartest thing because the chance of accomplishing big money is very small. But if you love it, the money doesn't matter and you can have another job on the side and make some cash there. So let's call it there, guys. I will be back home tomorrow. We have lots of fights this weekend that I will be covering. Uh, Haggerty is fighting for the kickboxing title. We have Bukau versus Sanchai. Gotta cover that. There's a glory event. There's a karate combat event. Lots of stuff happening. So I will be on the channel this weekend making sure I update you with hopefully video footage of those fights and just making sure that you guys have lots of stuff to watch. As always, guys, train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another video.